Does your SRT4 sound like this when you're trying to drive? Or do you want it to drive like this? mine could sound like that well guess what you came to the right place all right guys that was a little goofy but let's talk about these cars and you know what really grinds my gears with these things transmission problems really again no, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm done, I promise. So, in all seriousness, we've driven this since we've touched the transmission and put it all back together. It's been like two years now. And we've daily drived it. We drove it to work. Um, we've raced it. We've had it on street tires, drag radials. We put it through the whole nine and we've had no problem. Okay, so I wanted to make a bit of an intro for this because a lot of the footage I have that I'm gonna show you of when I tear the transmission apart and what we found with ours. And I took this footage back when this garage was like being built and I had a torpedo heater that was constantly kicking on because that was my only source of heat. It's all old footage. I'm probably gonna voice some of it over. I'm gonna try to make the best of it and hopefully help you guys. So without me blabbering anymore, let's get to it. I'll show you guys what we did. All right guys, we're gonna jump right into it here. So, Bam, there's a whole gear set outside of the transmission on the workbench. So don't worry, we're gonna show you how to get to this point if you need to get that crazy with yours. Uh, the biggest thing to mention at first is that you do not have to take your transmission out of the car to get to this point, which is super cool. You can leave everything in there and just pull this gear set out and work on everything and put it right back in. Now, before we get too deep into it, we're going to jump over to another clip real quick and talk about what we had going on with ours, and then we're coming right back to this. So, if you see what we got going on, if you got the exact same thing, then you know for sure this is going to help you. Okay, so to give you an idea of where you're at in here, when you take that shift plate off over there this is what you're gonna see is right here this is what this is your um, forks what actually shifts your synchronizer gears back and forth that which would be right you want to show right here when you take this plate off all of that would be right here come back over here So what I found out with mine so far, I got super lucky. I had a weird issue. Okay, my issues were third gear would mysteriously appear and disappear. I could put it in the third, it would go in perfectly. Other times I'd put it in and it would be in neutral still. It would it just wouldn't catch it or it would just lightly graze the gear. And it was a really weird, wacky issue. And then also I have second gear is grinding pretty much no matter what. So unless you are really careful and you rev match it, it's, there's something going on with second gear. So for me, my third gear issue was, take these apart here. This is something I could have found out without even taking it out of the transmission. This is an aftermarket piece. It should be a fork 
similar to this. That's what the factory ones is. This is either aftermarket, a badly made eBay part, or a homemade part where they cut off that fork I just showed you and they put this in and they use these little screws with a tack weld to keep them from unscrewing to hold this on. And this is what was going on. That is a lot of play for, I wanna show right here, for this little tooth has to catch in that groove and slide that way or slide this way come back over here so I think what was going on for me is sometimes because you know this could move for vibrations whatever sometimes it was there it would work just fine and other times it would do that and I think it was basically grazing right off the top here so I know these are prone to crack that's why this has been replaced so if you're having a similar issue, these can crack and then eventually they'll snap right off and you won't have a third gear at all. Because if I'm right, I believe third gear is that way. Okay, so if you're to the point that you want to pull your gear set out and see what's going on with it, it's pretty simple to get there. Uh, just go ahead and drain your transmission and then there's going to be a metal plate on the end. Just unbolt that throw it to the side then there's the actual other part of the transmission case the aluminum part and go ahead and unbolt that and then there's going to be two bearings that you just need to remove the snap rings the large ones on the outside and then that should come right off and then besides for that it's just a matter of the reverse gear I managed to get mine out without touching it, but it's pretty easy to take that off. It just unbolts from the outside of the case, and you can take that whole thing away as an assembly. I'm going to show a brief overview of how these synchronizers work. This is something I've had to learn. So, uh, the basic workings of it, from what I found out, is your forks. They sit on these. These are your synchronizers. Okay, for me, with my issue, these are the ones I'm looking at. This is first gear. It's the second gear. Because we come in, go from little to big, slightly bigger, slightly smaller, and then on down with the gear ratios. What happens here is your fork sits there you shift your gear in the car, that moves a little trigger over here. Your fork slides one way, and that's what actually couples first gear. Before you do that, everything's in neutral here. I can spin, let me move this one. There's your three, four over here that most people have issues with. We'll get into that later. Right now, I'm looking at this one. See, this is neutral, coasting down the road. Nothing is actually spinning. You put it in the first gear. There's locker rings in here. They're basically little clutches, little metal rings with clutch pads on them. And as you go to shift, they will actually tighten. And I could put just a little bit of pressure on here. And it almost, it's kind of like a drum brake inside there. It wants to lock up. That's what slows the gear down so you can get over into that gear grind free. Same thing with second. This would spin. I move it over. It would slow the gear down. Now this is the issue I think I have. I have to put a little bit more pressure. I tested and compared it to all the other ones to actually get this gear to stop because this is light pressure, I can still turn it with a little bit of resistance. This one, I put a little bit of pressure on it, and this whole thing is almost locked up. So I think I got a worn blocker ring inside here. 
Also, I'm gonna blow these apart. There's little springs. If you have gear pop-out issues, there's springs around here, I'll show you later, that hold this in place. Once you go in, see, I don't even think I went on there. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna show you. So that's all the way in. My springs, I think, are a little tired. Just that is all it takes, and now it's out of gear again. And that took almost no effort at all. Now to get it back to center, actually takes a little snap like it's supposed to, but in between here, it's real loose. And there it goes, it snapped in then. What I gotta do is we're gonna take this whole thing and we're gonna bust this all apart piece by piece. I'm gonna inspect all these synchros, all these rings on all of this. All right, guys, I wanna try to get some of this apart here and start diagnosing and expecting and seeing what my issues are with my constant second gear grind. First thing to get this apart, I got some special tools to deal with all this. I'll go over that. So here's some of the more specific tools we got to get started on this and then kind of supplemented with some creative ideals along the way and then some rental tools like this puller here on the left from AutoZone and then the press that we also have uh, that you guys will see later. Uh, but first to get this apart is there's a snap ring right here. I just got isn't big enough so I got a different ideal I'm gonna try to use a jaw and see if I can pull it off that way so what we got is the biggest three jaw puller that you can rent from AutoZone this is a let me double check I believe a seven ton yeah, seven ton three jaw puller. And from the looks of it, I'm the first one to use it. So the press I got is 12 ton. If I put that in perspective, I think this should get it off with no issue. So I got it all centered up there. I used one of my little dies out of my transmission kit so I can get a good punch in the center here. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a wing here. I'm gonna see what happens. Hopefully, it comes off easily. Take it nice and slow. See it moving. Well, 
bit more. Yep. All right, take two here. I ran out of space using this. It worked great. So I had to try something else. This is actually a tool that came with the kit. This is going to help me put this back on with the press. I'm trying to MacGyver in a little bit with it so I can get, I'm almost there, just a little bit more pull. I mean, it's almost to the point. And there it is. So, bearing, washer. Oh, what is this? I believe this is fifth gear. Needle bearings go inside that gear. Try to keep everything together here. Where we started. This is what's next. Here's our gear. Synchro teeth. Everything looks pretty good on here. Show you guys what's going on in here. This is the first time I'm seeing it, but I've done some research, so I should know vaguely what I'm looking for here. Here is that clutch pad inside. This is what, whoops, would come over here and actually slow that gear down. This is kind of tapered. So as it pushes over, it was basically, think of it as brake pads come and they force that gear to stop spinning. So these look just fine. And so yeah, okay, there's only supposed to be clutch material on one side as far as these ones go, because that just locks in there. See these teeth, they line up with these teeth, and they line up with the teeth on the gear. So let's go ahead and set that over. That's awesome. That means it's one less thing I gotta worry about with that one. Let's see. Does this whole thing come off here? There's a snap there. Ah, okay. That's what's going on. So I got one more snap ring. Alright. Several screwdrivers later, lock pliers, hammer, my hands, the wife's hands. We got that little sucker off there. That was not easy to get in and around there. Now that that's out of the way, this, our next thing right here, this is your synchronizer hub okay this is you got your ring there uh, you got those little locker springs I'm gonna go over here in a minute that I was saying that if you have gear pop-out issues these might be your part of your problem so first I want to look at this blocker ring this is the one for what I believe is reverse here and you see that still has plenty of meat on it there lots of clutch brake material whatever you want to call it which is good that makes sense these gears were work working fine I had no issues no grinding no nothing so this is a reference of what these other ones should look like. The more of these I find, the less stuff I have to buy. And then you have, after that, the gear itself. Here's a needle bearing inside there. I'm just gonna keep that in there. And then we're down to this fixture here. This gear, this gear and this gear is actually one thing 
Okay, we have the other setup behind it. I have to get this out of the way. I'll have to either see if I can use the press or the this big three jaw again. I have to get this out of the way. This is on a shaft, a spline, kind of a lot like that. The press I got, this, the way, you'll see later how the press works. This won't fit in my press. Um, I looked in my service manual. There's actually a special fixture you're supposed to use. I guess this wouldn't even fit in the, uh, I guess whatever press Chrysler had in their shops because they show using a special fixture to put this in so you could use a press because this wouldn't fit in the press properly. So what I have, same thing I used in my other video yesterday, I still got my seven ton three jaw puller I got from AutoZone. building this without a shaft inside of it. This way I can make sure everything gets put back in the right place. Okay, let's see what this uh, blocker ring looks like. These, okay, first and second gear have their own blocker rings. The other one I showed you, it was just like this thing with clutch material on it. These are a lot different. Okay, here's like your um, tapered hub. This is your ring. And this is your like synchronizer uh, like alignment teeth here. So, see what's going on here. Man. I tell you what, guys, I'm seeing some wear and tear. It's definitely a little uh, chipped around the edges. I want to see what that other ring looks like. So I'm going to get this ring off here, get this hub off. Okay, guys, I don't want to leave you out on anything. I just got that snap ring off. I must be learning something because that only took me like two minutes to get that off. Let's see what else is going on here. Okay, one and two synchronizer hub. Just gonna set that there. Just wanted to look at it, see if there's anything crazy going on. I don't see much. There it goes, snapped in there. All right, Let's see what these rings look like. There's that. I like alignment teeth here. And here's the important part. Here's our uh, blocker rings for one and two. This one looks great. It looks just like some of the other ones I've seen. No serious issues there. Here's this hub. Come on now. Okay, then we're down to first gear here. Uh, you have little oil uh, passageways on these gears and I can see straight through to the other side. So that's a good sign. Um, that's a big thing where if you use regular silicone, don't do it. When you seal this all back up, you know how it squeezes out on the outside? Well, guess what? It squeezes out on the inside too. 
So, and that stuff will go in there and that will clog these little holes. This stuff all has oil that like pumps through it. You clog one of these, this thing is gonna fry itself, okay? Luckily, I don't see that issue, so. I'm not gonna take this off. There's no reason for me to. This is as far as I needed to go. I believe this is something else that needed to be pressed off. Um, first gear, I didn't have any issues with. I'm this far, I can inspect like these synchronizer teeth, everything, I don't see anything crazy. Once I get off camera here, I'll look a lot closer at these things. Alright, I looked at these blocker rings a little closer, guys. Show you uh, what you would be looking for. It took me some time to figure this out. Okay. I got the light on on the camera here. Hopefully you can see. Okay, this is... Let me go through this real quick. This is like your alignment teeth right here. This is your blocker ring. You got friction material there friction material here and this is like your hub okay or your this is the tapered part of the hub this is what I noticed okay see how that hub this part right here that's flush I put this in and make sure I got it all straight here See how you can see that lip hang out just a little bit there? It's not totally flush. This is first gear. This one was I didn't have any issues with. Okay. Now this is second gear. This is one I've seen. It looks a little beat up in here. The outside looks just fine. And I'll put this together. Press it nice and tight. Okay. See how there's almost no lip at all. It's not flush, but it's almost, it's very close. It's being flush. As compared to this one, come on, focus camera. There it goes. See, pretty big difference. I mean, not a big difference, but apparently in the synchronizer world, that's a big difference. This is the only gear I was having grinding issues with. So far, I haven't broke apart. This is third here but this is the only one that's different than the other ones because I had two here and then two here this is the only one that's different and that's the only one I'm having issues with so I just have to assume that that ring is no good now um, so I went ahead uh, last night I ordered that I got some DCR carbon uh, but yeah that's what I got on the way and I got my aftermarket uh, synchro spring kit I was telling you about so that stuff's on the way cost me with the 10% off eBay had going on right now for black extended Black Friday it's just under 300 bucks I just wanted to cover that that's what I found that's why my second gear is grinding so I'll put these new ones, new rings. It comes in a set, first gear, second gear. I have to, it's the only way you can buy it. And uh, yeah, hopefully I have no second gear grind. Okay guys, so I'm ending this video off here. I have so much footage that I'm breaking this into two parts. This is gonna be it for part one. Part two is gonna be hovering right above right now. If you don't see it there, Check the description, it'll be down there, and I'll see you on the next one.